Welcome to the garage. I'm Robert, and this is Haslip Psychoworks. And today, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. So follow along. So for those of you that don't know or have seen it and just didn't know what it was called, the process of taking thinner sheet metal and belling out these holes uh, is commonly called dimple dyeing. The whole purpose of this is to take thin sheet metal and you're not necessarily making it stronger, but you're making it more rigid. Like this is significantly harder to bend now that it's been dimple dyed a few times compared to say this 22 gauge, which you know just flaps in the breeze. All right, Robert. Well, that's cool and all, but uh, why are you showing us this? In the our next video, it will be part six for Project Vulcan. And one of the things that we're going to do is build some gussets. And by gussets, I mean small little pieces that can go between, say, two pieces of tubing to kind of give us a better look for one, uh, but that's not the most important, but to also strengthen or make a joint more rigid. And you can buy these, which you can buy online and they've got the holes pre-punched in them they've got a nice subtle curve in them and they're, they're pretty thick and if you've only got one or two spots these would probably work out great but that's not going to work in our application um, most of the time these are cut to fixed angles 90 uh, 45 22 and a half um, you can see the curve there, but again, that's not going to work in our situation, but these do have their place and they do work extremely well. So we're going to have to make our own gussets. And I wanted to break this gusset slash dimple die video out from part six of the Vulcan build because there's enough information to make its own video. And I didn't want to stretch out part six to be too long. I, I kind of like keeping these videos short, but concise and keep you guys focused on what's going on so that you watch the entire video and learn as much as you can. So normally, if you guys have built something and you needed to build a gusset, you probably go like I did to your local metal place um, I think I got this one from Ace uh, but Home Depot, Lowe's they all seem to stock this stuff and this particular piece if our camera will focus as you can see is eighth inch thick by three inches wide by three foot long right decently thick plenty strong but if you start making several gussets out of this piece, you're going to be adding weight. Sometimes, not a big deal, right? Um, but what if you're building, say, a cafe racer or a mini bike? The whole point is to make it strong, but as light as possible. Because, well, fast. <laughs> um, so... If you're building a bunch of gussets to put on a bike or a go-kart or a car or a mini bike or whatever it may be, and it's something that moves and you want the best power to weight ratio, you don't want to throw a ton of weight on it. So something that the guys way back in the day, and by way back, um, I mean probably about the 40s, 50s maybe, we started seeing the belled holes on cars. Prior to that, and there is some debate about this, 
prior to that we could see it in aircraft uh, because there again you want as light as possible but still strong so they built bulkheads and panels and the now famous bomber seats out of thin gauge steel or aluminum and they popped holes in them and it belted out to add back the rigidity now is this as strong as this eighth inch thick no is it pretty close yes is it roughly less than half the weight we're gonna find out and the big one for me anyway a piece of 22 gauge and this is six inches wide by 24 inches long or two feet was half the price of this eighth inch and I can cut as many gussets out of this thin gauge as I want and it's never going to add up to the weight of half of this eighth inch it eighth inch thick stick so what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, a, a gusset out of the 22 gauge and out of the eighth inch gauge or out of the eighth inch piece they're going to be dimensionally the same as except for in the thickness and then what we're going to do is i'm going to weigh the two pieces independently and we're going to see exactly what kind of weight savings we get and just how strong they are comparatively now again this thin gauge will never be as strong as the thicker material but you can make it nearly as rigid in certain planes and in certain situations that this is acceptable as a replacement to something that is roughly two to three times its thickness now would i put this in as a stress member for something that is designed to save my life hell no would i put this between say a roll cage which is rigid and solid and say the pillars of a car where that joint isn't going to be the decision factor on whether I live or die in a wreck? Yeah, no problem. Would I put this in as a gusset that will stiffen some joints and look badass? Yeah, but again, this is not something that is extremely structural. At the end of the day, you're still taking a thinner material removing even more material and using in place of something a lot thicker so let's keep that in mind so less talking and let me show show you what we're actually going to be using and just how easy this is to do at home now the tools that you're going to need of course you need a way to cut your gussets out you know that's that's totally up to you whatever you're into as far as metal cutting goes in our case I'm probably going to use the bandsaw then we need a way to cut some holes a lot of guys will use hole saws which I have never had that great of luck in popping a clean hole in thin material um, thicker stuff yeah no problem but thinner stuff I prefer to use one of these step bits and the holes that we're going to need to make for our dimple dies are not that big. The biggest one that I have to show you guys today is actually it needs a one inch hole. So this step bit goes up to three quarter. Uh, you can get these at Harbor Freight or pretty much anywhere. Chuck it up in your drill. Uh, you center punch. You get your mark to help me guide the tip of the drill bit and you drill down to the size you need quick and simple drill through one way and chamfer the outside because you want these holes to be clean 
flip it over and hit the back side. And that's going to ensure that your metal is clean without burrs and ready to go. So, so far, that means to cut the steel, a drill bit, and a drill. What you need next is a way to actually bell these out. And that's where the dimple dies come in. So this particular set is, I wonder if they show through, latestrage.net. And they laser inscribe the sizes. So I got what I think I will use the most. I got a one inch, a three quarters, and a half. Now I purchased this set from utvdistribution.com pretty cool guys um, talk to them a little bit awesome dudes they sell a lot of stuff they have an ebay store which is where i purchased these and they also have their website um, they'll answer any questions you have and they were really cool with me these are very affordable dimple dies notice i said affordable not cheap. Cheap to me means low quality, low price, and you might get a couple uses out of it. These are affordable. They are well built. They are solid. They have a great finish. And I've used, the, used them a couple times, and I'm very impressed. So this would fall into the affordable category, not the cheap category. I believe... When I purchased these um, from UTV Distribution's eBay store, and of course I'll put links to all that in the description, I think I got these three for $39. Now you can spend quite a bit on dimple dies. They're not hardened. A lot of people sell hardened dimple dies because if you're going to be dimpling, say, something like stainless, or if you're in a production environment, you can wear these out. Um, so you probably would want to go with the hardened set. But one of the main reasons I went with these guys is you can purchase just a single dimple die. A lot of places where you go to buy these make you buy the whole set. Which, if, you know, if you got the money to throw into it initially, good on you. Has some cycle works. We're on a budget. So, you know, we got to eat. Um, so... I bought the, this set, and like I said, you can buy one, you can buy two, you can, of course, you can buy the entire set if you would. If that's how you want to roll. I will tell you that I do plan on purchasing more of these, and I would love to have the whole set. So we've we figured out how we're going to punch our holes. We know how we're going to cut our steel. We know we need dimple dies to bell out. The sheet metal to give us some of that rigidity back but how do we squeeze this metal oh and the stringy stuff you see coming off of these they don't require lubrication but they are raw steel so instead of coating them with oil to get oil all over everything what i use is actually a thread cutting lubricant which is really sticky and it doesn't fling off very easily, but it will protect the dimple die and it keeps it from rusting and also keeps the chances of it galling if you miss a burr or something on your sheet metal, keeps it from screwing up the finish. So the process is we need to drill a hole that matches closely. You don't want this thing super tight, but matches closely this half inch or whatever the size is and you take the end if you can see that see that dish and we're going to push this down and we're going to squeeze the sheet metal and it's going to when we press it all the way down we pop our die off we get our dimple well you got a couple ways you can go about doing this you can use a vise um, I don't recommend that, but if you're in a pinch, it will work. There's a good amount of force required to do this. Now, this does not require a 20-ton shot press. Would I like to have a 20-ton shot press? You betcha. 
Do I? Not yet. So I'm making do with a little six ton unit. I'll show you that now. This is my press for now. It is a six ton unit and it's completely manual. Nothing really impressive about it. Real basic, very affordable, low price. You can probably find these used for a song and a dance. Uh, I don't remember paying that much for it when I bought it. This thing's probably 12 years old now. And if you take a good look at it, there's really not that much to it. A couple pieces of C-channel, a couple pieces of angle iron for the base, some flat stock, a plate, some springs, some eye bolts, and a, a jack. So if you're crafty and you've got enough scrap metal, you can make one of these yourself, especially if all you're going to do is use it to do dimple dies. Like I said, you don't need some big 20 ton or bigger shop press, although it would be nice. We, we don't need it for this application. You can probably get away with a, a two ton jack if that's what you had. But that's it right there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up with our template for our gussets. I'm going to cut the core, the eighth inch plate and the 22 gauge to match. And then, you know, don't tell my wife, but I'm going to get her kitchen scale <laughs> and we're going to measure the weight difference between the two before we drill any holes or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and draw up that template and get the seal cut. All right. So I've cut our gusset out of the eighth inch and out of our 22 gauge and just so you guys know I'm not playing any tricks they are the exact same size all right so let's do the eighth inch thick piece first I uh, hope you can see that two and a quarter ounces not heavy by any means 22 gauge, 5 eighths. That's a considerable weight difference. But we're not done yet. So next one I'm going to do is clamp these together. I'm going to drill a pilot hole in the center of this gusset. And then we're going to open up that pilot hole on both pieces. And get it ready to do the dimple die on the 22 gauge. And then we'll measure and see what the weight difference is then. So we've got our half inch hole drilled in our eighth inch thick plate. Two and one eighth ounce. And our 22 gauge, same hole size. Five eighths. I'm beginning to question the accuracy of this scale. Let's try grams. 16 grams. 61 grams. Now we've got our pilot hole in our 22 gauge and it, it's rather flimsy. I mean, I could probably, I could probably bend this all the way over. No problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our half inch dimple die. Like so, we're going to put it in our press and we're going to put that bell or dimple in our sheet metal and see how, see how much more rigid it becomes. Now the key to this is, as you compress this, you'll see the sheet metal deform and then once you get it completely bent or closed, the sheet metal will flatten out. That's when you know the stop. So 
And you can see it deflecting now. It starts to flatten out. And that should be it. And the, there's our dimple dyed piece. Okay, so through the middle and about to here, I can't bend that with my hands. Now here, as you can see, I can bend that. But that's going to be welded to our tubing anyway. So that should be rather rigid. But, oh, yeah, in the center, that's solid. 61 grams, 16 grams. Yeah, and this looks way cooler. So, for very little money invested... You could also be doing dimple dyeing on your projects at home. And results kind of speak for themselves. 16 versus 61. I'll show you guys again. Sixteen grams for the twenty two gauge with the same half inch hole and the dimple die versus sixty sixty one grams for the eighth inch thick plate with the same half inch hole drilled in it. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> Would this look better on a bike? Or would this look better on a bike? Yeah, this is the way we're going to be going. So like I said, for very little money invested, you have a stepping drill bit, a drill. Easiest way to do it. Your sheet metal and a vise will do in a pinch or some sort of press. And then your dimple dies. Again, these are from latestrage.net. Uh, that's who makes them. And I purchased mine from utvdistribution.com. And again, links to them down in the description below. I purchased mine off eBay. Very affordable. And that's the result. So we're going to end this video here. In the next video, we're going to put this in the practice. We're going to be making some actual gussets and some plates for, for Project Vulcan. And we're going to use those to hold and hide the battery and some of the electronics. And to stiffen up the tube work on the chassis that we did in previous episodes. Pretty much, guys, that's it. Um... It's not as hard as it looks, um, or as hard as you may have thought it was initially. So, uh, yeah, I highly recommend you pick up a set of these and either build or buy a press. And, yeah, get out there and dimple dye some stuff. It's pretty sweet looking. And then you can also say you did it yourself. How awesome is that? That's it for today, guys. Until next time, get up, get out there, and do it.